The Amos and Andy Show, which started in 1951, was a groundbreaking television series that brought laughter, surprise, and a mix of emotions to viewers. It was one of the first TV shows with an African-American cast. As you watch, you'll discover many funny, shocking, and sad facts about the show. For instance, did you know that despite its popularity, the show faced criticism and was eventually taken off the air due to concerns about racial stereotypes? I can't watch TV, but I know that people who saw it for the first time were often struck by its unique humor and the way it tackled social issues of the time. What about you? Do you have a memory or experience with the Amos and Andy show that stands out? We'd love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. Your personal connections to the show can shed new light on its legacy. A boys school, huh? Well, boys will be boys. I'm terribly sorry you were troubled, Lieutenant, but I assure you... The television series from the early 1950s, known for its comedic value, brought together a cast that delivered performances which are still enjoyable to this day. The show was pioneering for its time, featuring African-American actors in professional roles that were not commonly seen on television, such as judges and lawyers. The humor was a product of its era, reflective of the comedic style prevalent in shows from that period. Notably, the character known as the Kingfisher stood out for his comedic timing and expressive features, which made him a standout performer in the series. His evolution from a secondary character in the original radio program to a central figure in the television adaptation marked a significant shift in the show's dynamic, reminiscent of other characters in television history who became focal points of their respective series. The collection of episodes offers a glimpse into the early days of television comedy, showcasing a style that set the stage for future programs. Watching these episodes provides not only laughter, but also a historical perspective on the evolution of television entertainment. Barring me, and if by any chance he should call and ask any questions, I'd appreciate it if you didn't say nothing about this. In the transition to television, the show brought a significant change to its characters' socioeconomic status, portraying them as middle class. This shift was visually represented by the upgrade of the Fresh Air Taxi Company's vehicle and the professional presentation of Amos's uniform and office. Additionally, the series featured a unique casting choice with Amanda Randolph and Lillian Randolph, sisters in real life, reprising their roles from the radio version as Sapphire's mother and Madam Queen, respectively. The show also shares a somber connection with the passing of two of its stars, Tim Moore and Spencer Williams, who both died on December 13th, 11 years apart. Yeah, with the kingfish gone, I gonna make a... Attracting top talent out of retirement, the show's producers secured the participation of Tim Moore and Spencer Williams, both seasoned performers with extensive careers behind them. Jester Hairston, known for his musical talent, contributed the song Amen to the film Lilies of the Field and was the singing voice behind Sidney Poitier's performance. His song later became a hit for the impressions. Addressing the portrayal of African Americans, Alvin Childress, in the documentary examining the show's controversy, expressed that the series depicted African Americans in a variety of professional roles, which was a significant departure from the stereotypical roles commonly seen on television during that era. Sure. That's funny. This guy Thorndike said he bought a shirt in there yesterday morning. Uh huh. Casting decisions for the show were influenced by the actor's resemblance and vocal similarity to the original radio characters. Spencer Williams was chosen for his visual and vocal match to Charles Corll's portrayal of Andy. Similarly, Alvin Childress and Tim Moore were selected for their natural likeness and voice to the characters Amos and Kingfish, respectively. Despite achieving good viewership, the show faced criticism for its portrayal of African Americans, leading to its cancellation by CBS following objections from the NAACP. The show's reruns were also discontinued in 1966 due to continued protests. On me. You ain't got no dogs over there enough, need in the mid-1950s, the original creators sought to bring the show back with a modern twist, planning to use split-screen technology to appear alongside the actors. However, the series faced significant opposition from the start. The National Association for the Advancement of Colored People strongly objected to the portrayal of African Americans, deeming it harmful and offensive. Their persistent efforts led to the show's cancellation from syndication in 1966, marking the end of its broadcast. Since then, the only glimpses of the show have been through a documentary that included clips from various episodes. 
Interestingly, the choice of music for the show's opening and closing was driven by practicality rather than artistic preference. Angel's Serenade, a piece free of copyright restrictions, became the signature tune performed by the Jeff Alexander Chorus. In the landscape of early television, Jester Hairston emerged as a notable actor, participating in three films that received nominations for the Academy Award for Best Picture. His roles in The Alamo, To Kill a Mockingbird, and In the Heat of the Night highlighted his acting range. Meanwhile, James E. Wall, who was initially not the first choice for the role of Kingfish, brought his unique interpretation to the character. The production was innovative for its time, incorporating live audience reactions into the episodes, which added a layer of authenticity and engagement to the viewing experience. This approach to audience integration was a pioneering move, setting a precedent for future television shows. Well, and they're getting married this afternoon. Yeah. I know just how you feel. In the show, the characters were part of a group called the Mystic Knights of the Sea. Nick Stewart faced termination from the cast during the final season due to his dedication to the Ebony Showcase Theater, which he founded, and where he hosted a variety show. Despite the producer's demands, Stewart chose not to abandon his theater project. Gene Roth, another actor, was slated to appear in an episode titled The Cure in 1974, but his part was ultimately removed before the episode aired. Brown, uh, who won the thing, but he just left the office. Oh, hello there, Andy. Transitioning from radio to television, the show became a significant success on the national broadcasting company's rival network, the Columbia Broadcasting System. The program had a dedicated following, including notable admirers like Red Fox, and served as a springboard for several actors who later joined the cast of Sanford and Son, such as Lillian Randolph and Alvin Childress. Despite its popularity, the show faced cancellation in April 1953 after airing 52 out of 65 produced episodes. The remaining unaired episodes, which shifted focus to the character Kingfish with minimal appearances from the titular characters, were later distributed for syndication and debuted on January 4, 1955 under the title The Adventures of Kingfish. George. These men, they never started a fire in their life. Now listen here, you. I don't know who you are, but I'm warning you not to try to interfere. In the comedic escapades of the series, the character known as Kingfish finds himself ousted from his residence on seven separate occasions. A consistent visual gag is his departure, each time with a painting of a grinning pirate tucked under his arm, adding a touch of humor to his misfortunes. Following the original run, which concluded after 65 episodes, the network decided to extend the series' life in syndication. To bolster the number of episodes available, the original cast reunited to produce 13 additional episodes. Although initially intended to be released under a new title focusing on Kingfish's adventures, these episodes were ultimately included in the syndicated reruns of the original show, maintaining continuity for the audience. If you didn't say nothing about this. Oh yes, of course, I understand. Mrs. Stevens, I knew the first day of the employment. In the early days of television, a series made history, but also sparked controversy. Despite its popularity, the show faced criticism for its portrayal of African American characters, which many found to be offensive and perpetuating stereotypes. This led to significant backlash and ultimately contributed to the show's cancellation. The actors who were talented and broke ground in television found their careers impacted by the controversy surrounding the show, limiting their opportunities in the industry thereafter. This series serves as a reminder of the evolving standards of representation in media and the lasting effects that stereotypical roles can have on actors' careers. Best idea to me. <laughs> Andy, for the last time,